for another episode, episode of Lucky, 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 Ty, 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 Explosion! <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back to Lucky Time Explosion, your source for art news, art chatter, and interviews throughout most of the week. It is Monday, so it's just me and Morgan today. Happy Monday, my guy. Happy Monday to you, too. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> we got some news in the city going on. Mm. Uh, the Shashama Ball is upon us. Oh, you know Shashama? Cool. I have been to one of their shows. It was amazing. Uh, it was like on three different floors of this building, and it was like all sorts of um, crazy installations, people body painting, yeah, people squirming around nude, full of paint. <laughs> yeah, that sounds it. Wearing crochet, like full body crocheted suits. Oh, yeah, that's it was like cool. a different planet, but it was cool. I love it. It's, it's quite the experience. Yeah. So the Shashama Ball, uh, Shashama is an organization here in New York that started in 1995. And its premise is basically to take unused retail space and real estate and give it to artists for a short amount of time. So they're different locations. Yeah. So they manage a whole bunch of different like studio locations, temporary pop-up locations, things like that. Uh, they've been around for a really long time. We have a lot of great friends like Amanda Wu from What Does It Mean with Amanda Wu podcast. Yes. She's going to be there as well, as well as several other members here at the Sola Studio, which is a great segue before we get into the rest of the art news. Quick word from our sponsor, Solis Studio. Uh, Solis Studio is a full-service print shop. We also do framing, uh, commercial printing, business cards, flyers, pretty much anything you might need as an artist we aim to do for you. And we have an amazing membership program where you can pay in a tiny bit every month and it screws into a balance for you to use when you need it. Yeah, you're oh, like yeah. making your own little treasure chest for prints. <laughs> yes. But we have an awesome Epson 9000, so oh yeah, yeah. we have that. That thing's actually pretty, uh, pretty sought after right now. I think in Europe, a lot of people are buying them because uh, they're they don't like the new one or whatever. We got a good print, is my point. Anyway, on to the rest of the news. Uh, do you see this uh, painting going up at auction that was found at a bus stop? I did, yeah. and I'm sad I wasn't the one to find it. I'm sure, yeah. I think anybody would be uh, excited to find a $31 million Tiziana Valsilio. Uh, the title of the work is The uh, the Rest on the Flight into Egypt. And it was actually found quite a while back. It was found in 2002 hmm. at a bus stop in London. Wait a minute. Yeah. So it was found at another bus stop? Or is it no, the, no, no, no. Same bus stop. Oh, <laughs> it was found say, once at the bus shit, stop. These people and... keep on bringing a painting, leaving yeah, it no. at the bus stop. Very forgetful <laughs> robbers. Actually, I've lost work on a bus. Really? Yeah. So I get, well, I didn't lose the work. I gave it to somebody. Uh, it was like a big painting. Uh, I think it was rolled up. A pretty big painting, like maybe 40 by 40. Oh, damn. That is big. And it was all rolled up. <clears> and then I got a message from them later that night, like, I left it on the bus. And no. I was just like, why'd you tell me that? Just don't they, tell me. <laughs> oh, my God. There was, it's um, okay. I, it happens. I, when I was living with my parents in Orange County, uh -huh. uh, Monroe, New York, um, I was doing shows um, at Alex Gray's, what was it called? The gallery? Cosm. Yes. Yeah, the Cosm, Cosm. Chapel of Sacred Mirrors. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, and I got uh, the privilege to do an art show down there. And so I packed my stuff. I jumped in my car. It was like an hour and change ride. I get down there, I open up my suitcase of my artwork, and I had only packed one piece. A single piece? One piece. You didn't know what you packed? <laughs> I totally didn't pack the rest of my art. I don't know if I was, you know, I have ADHD. I don't know if yeah. I, like, what the hell happened in between packing and then leaving all the way down to New York City. But yeah, I opened it up, and I just stared at this one piece, and I was like, <laughs> I didn't know to cry or scream or punch myself into junk. I, had I have no a idea, theory, but it was it was pretty shitty feeling, and my stomach dropped. I was like, uh, I made you know, I put that one piece up, and people loved it, but I was just like, oh, you, you could have had so much more. Me. My guess that what happened is that you packed that one piece and smoked a congratulatory bowl, and then just like spaced out and, and just during went. that time, it was probably a bong load. <laughs> what up? 
Nice. Yeah, I don't do the bong rips anymore. I mean, what 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 use is it? It just really gets you smashed. I mean, if you have all day to play Tekken three, yeah, then then it's okay. I remember the first time I smoked a bong load, and um, right after I ate uh, one of those candies called Nips. You nips. Know, there was like hard candy, and then there was like um, like a slushy chocolate juice. juice inside. Oh, inside. is that the liquor? The liquor chocolate? It was disgusting, and I was yeah. so blazed that my mouth got so gummy. Oh yeah, from yeah. this candy that it started like locking my mouth down, and my friends were like, "Are you okay?" And all I could say was, "Nambazam." Wow, I don't, Nambazam. I don't know what you were smoking, but that was not the grass that they're legalizing today. Right, different stuff, but yeah. So you know, <laughs> when anybody would get completely destroyed from a bong rep, we would say they were Nambazam. Oh, nice! I do love the yeah. lore of extra. Um, like slang i love making up slang do you, i made up this word uh with an ex-girlfriend called trang trang and i don't know if she uses it still but i still use it uh what and does it mean trang means like any excess random stuff so like clutter oh. like just random things that you don't that don't need to be there that should get out of there just like what is all this trang Pick up all i like this trang i like trang i like it it's we cute could try to bring that back we could try to bring back in other art news we have uh, a grant a new grant here in the city that's been uh, announced and already handed out actually but i'm sure they'll be doing another round it is called artists and mothers and it is a twenty five thousand dollar grant if you are a mother and an artist goes meant to be uh, used for your child's uh, child care Right. So it's 25K, and they calculated that based on what, like, an au pair or a nanny makes. In a or, year. or to an iPhone, just right. the cost of an iPhone for the whole year, <laughs> which is now a, a, many parents' nannies. Is it's their true. IPhone. I was kind of like, oh my God, 25K, that's not very much for a year. Yeah. It must I be mean, like they're going to they're gonna give you, like, a high school girl, you know, some high school kid. Yeah. Be like, here you go. Who sleeps all day. Yeah. And calls their boyfriend and yeah. texts with their friends. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Like, you know, I don't know. I, I had a TV when I was a kid. Now, you know, kids have these tiny iPhones and they know exactly what yeah. they're doing. They're like, I see like a three-year-old on a subway, like just like no, exactly like selecting things on the screen, like yeah. knowingly. Like, I'm just like, what the I think the funniest that? thing is when you see kids trying to use things that are not touchscreens. They kind of go up to stuff that aren't touchscreens, like expecting everything to be a touchscreen. Well, you know, I've but, seen that a lot. Like they'd be like tapping on like an advertisement, or something. I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> Try again, little buddy. Yeah, no, it's sad. I think it's sad. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm from the generation that I'm from, and that I'll be long gone once it gets worse. I'm not. I'm, I'm the, I'm on the opposite team. I'm, I'm pro tech. I like it. Yeah. I think advancing is good. I do think that there's a like a, a dumbing down effect that's happening. Well, actually, but not too bad. Not too bad. I did read something very interesting today. What did you read today? Uh, the Surgeon General. Uh huh. Is putting a warning. On social media. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like like uh like the how we have um Yep, this just happened. <laughs> Warnings Basically, on the pack of a cigarette. It says so Surgeon General calls for social media warnings. Uh oh. Yeah. So the warning just says do not listen to Lucky Time Explosion. Yeah. You're, you'll I, get you know, too smart. They say your brain that, will fall out. You know, people are getting too depressed that the uh social media is just suicide rates are up and mm. you know. I mean, the first I thing I did when I got on the internet is to find the most disgusting visuals I could find. <laughs> and um, That's of our generation, too, though. Yeah, yeah. But Back I'm nice. Rotten. I'm pleasant. It didn't ruin me. Rotten.com, to me, was like, you know, nothing. That was like the uh, nicest site that I went to. <laughs> and and I you're not ruined? I don't know about that. Uh, no, I can't look at I mean, listen, it's it's... Oh. It's a weird, morbid curiosity, but I mean, I feel like I've seen enough. And, yeah. um, you know, there was Gorgasm and Ogreish.com. Of course. I think Gorgasm and Rotten are both gone now, right? Oh, or yeah. Is Style Project is still around, but I think it's just like a porn site. That's but um, all the goodies are gone. All the great blockbuster death sites are all gone. That's probably well, not a all good of thing. Them. Probably a good thing. It kind of traumatized me a little bit. Although I was always able to just be like, "This, nope, nope, not enough. You know, not today. I'm satisfied my curiosity. Get out of here." Yeah, I mean, turn it off. I um, started a Lucky Time Explosion account on Twitter or X or whatever, but yeah, I I don't. I still don't get it. (laughs) I heard some. I heard somebody say, "Yeah, I've never really used Twitter. Like, I don't like it." But I heard somebody say the other day that um, that X that Twitter is the only thing that's okay to dead name. The dead name? Yeah, dead naming. Like, what is that? So dead naming is uh, 
like if you're a trans person mm-hmm. and you used to be called Samuel and now you want to be called Sammy or like Sarah or something, uh-huh. uh, dead naming is when somebody uses your old name uh, intentionally as a way to like uh, huh. to like prod you and tease you and to you know be a dick basically. So, mm. like, if you change your, if you want to be Morgana and you decided, right. you know, you're a woman now, if I was to call, run around going like Morgan, Morgan, that's dead naming. But they, they're okay with dead naming Twitter. They're fine with that. So Got it. Got the internet it. has this is spoken. very interesting. I'm so old and, and unaware of these terms. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah. You said like, you didn't know bet. Yeah, I didn't know bet. We talked about this earlier. I had no idea. Everyone was just like, bet. I'm like, do you want to play cards? Like, I don't really have that much money on me. I'm surprised because that's a very New York slang. Bet. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of ruining things, uh, we're t- uh, I, w- I want to talk a little bit about my own project. I'll be the guest today. A little selfless, uh, shameless self-promotion. I've been working on, I just think it's interesting to talk about, mm. but I've been working on this um, book. I'm trying to self-publish a book on Amazon about art history, and it has some art in it of my own, and I had been working on this concept called 100 Famous Paintings Done Badly, which I've now revised to just be famous paintings done badly because i don't know if i'm going to get to 100 because i'm starting to have new like requirements for it right i see i remember yeah. you're, you're going through the the, the phases here yeah so That's i started this project off um uh, using i'm it's still being used on procreate so i'm using digital tools to do this but trying to make it look more painterly and i originally started with this picture of the mona lisa uh, and i like the, i really like this mona lisa painting it's very funny to me i also I like really it. like my um original girl with the pearl earring painting which i'll show here i think i really like these i think they're funny they're good they're i like them but i realized that it was just really expensive to print a full color book through kdp right and also not really necessary that they be in color so i decided to kind of shift gears and do these now as like black and white pin illustrations so i'm actually using the original source material and like very quickly how are you Creating these again? This is virtually. Yeah, it's in um, Procreate. Yeah, if you've never used Procreate for the iPad and you're an artist and you have an iPad, what are you doing? Oh, so Procreate, it's not not VR. No, not VR, no, no. No, these are actually just on iPad, yeah. Uh, But Procreate's an incredible tool if you haven't used it on your iPad. It's really, really good. Yeah, and you're doing this through Amazon, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm just going to get, you know, unless somebody wants to pick me up from this. <laughs> right. Well, check these out. These are the new ones. Like I I wanted to make a book like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um and I thought I was using Amazon, but I must have used someone through Amazon. Long story short, they still call me today. They call me from every- Hey, Mr. Morgan Lappin. I'm like, dude, it's been a year and a half. You know what? And you're still fucking calling me to make my book. Yeah. Are you like wow? I don't know. I mean, I'm slightly flattered. I know that's part of the protocol, <laughs> but come on, after a year and a half, and these people are still trying to get me to make a fucking book. I mean, that's like asking a girl, like, remember when you told me you didn't quite like me before? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming back. I'm thinking, you know, maybe you had some scumbags in between, and now you're feeling it's time for a little bit of Morgan Lap, and <laughs> you still feel the same? How strange. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? Maybe that strategy works. I mean, I mean, I, I think assume to get it me on a work. bad day, like a day where I just want to make a book. Yeah, I don't know. I well, want to find these people. It probably was. Them. It probably was KDP. I think they call people up, uh, and you know, stop. if you if you started an account and started a book and then didn't finish it, they right. want to make sure you do it. I so never even started. Pay. I think next time they call, I'm just going to start a really sick conversation with them. And yeah. Keep them on the phone for hours. Yeah, Talk it's it's up. a tough one. You know, a lot of people have issues with Amazon. A lot of people like love it and use it, and a lot of people hate it. And think they're like evil monopoly, and you know, to be truthful, uh, he does kind of look like Lex Luthor, doesn't he? Uh, Bezos. Oh yeah, oh totally. He looks totally. like Lex, Lu- and Lex how Luthor. How did I never think about that? But he is a hundred percent Lex. Luthor. He's all bald Holy now. Shit. He's all ripped. <laughs> I know. I love his scary laugh. You know, his laugh he's scares all, the pants off of me. And he's kind of like slightly muscular. Yeah, now he's all like ripped and stuff. He it's wears really those funny. polo shirts. He's all jacked, like RFK. Right. Yo, that would be an amazing wrestling a mud match. RFK yeah. versus. B- <laughs> they're both but pretty jacked. It, it would be good it, it is a um, rfk would be like listen jeff oh my god you're going down yeah but despite any moral quandaries you might have with a mega american mega corporation uh i will say that the kdp self-publishing is one of the fastest and easiest ways to self-publish a book i've ever used because we made a book originally That's before right. kdp existed i think 
I keep on thinking KD Lang every time you say that. Yeah, KD Lang. Well, now you're awesome really showing your age. Yeah. People are like watching this going, who the hell are you talking about? This is Katie Lane. Look her up. Amazing. Yeah, but we yeah, we did a book. Remember our book? Yeah, we had a versus book. It was Brooklyn Collage Collective versus the Collage Artists of Con Artists. It's a yeah. really beautiful book. The work is rather beautiful. Can uh, people still buy it on your site? Here and there. I have to put it back up on my site. I yeah. and, and I have been working have on my website. That's right. I've been tinkering and tootling and poking and prodding. Um, I had a big silkscreen project years ago called Ultimate Assembly. Um, the cool and, name. Um, those t-shirts t have been sitting in my room in five bins for years, and it's time to put them on the internet and sell them. They are very yes. unique. They are magical. Um, go to morganlappin.com. You still have those coats? I like your coats. I do have the coats. They are still up there. That was an, an interesting situation. I won't talk about it too much, but again, if you are an artist and you want to make money in your life and you <laughs> are, you know, courted by a company, yes, get a lawyer. Don't even <laughs> think about reading that contract without a lawyer. You will always be screwed. Get That's a funny. lawyer. So you got a little screwed over with those? Oh, I got big time screwed. They bent me over and sent me seaworthy. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, but so go to morganlappin.com and look at yes. my stuff. It is good to know what you're doing and make sure your contract is favorable. Uh, I know that there's uh, some people we know uh, who like got approached by like some big bands and stuff and then yeah. they didn't want to pay them royalties. Correct. And, you know, it's, it's kind of an irony that the bigger of a person you're working with, the more they're going to try and get out of paying you. It's, it's really sad. Yeah. And we're not talking about this to dissuade anybody from making art, but it, it, you know, there are a lot of people who clearly take advantage of artists, and and it's you, you got to be prepared. It's a weird thing because you know, a lot of these people come at you, you know, musicians, you know, and um, record companies, on, on really big labels. It's definitely not the, the musician themselves; it's the label. They're, you know. And they basically want you to do everything for basically nothing. Right. And then royalties, they don't want you involved in royalties on merch, which is like obviously the most important thing for an artist to have on anything that their image is on. Royalties is number one. Yeah. Number one. Often so. they don't want to pay them though. So it's like you either no. got to you gotta get a good amount up front uh, or you've got to you know do no, nothing up front and good royalty deal. I know, it sucks. But and then you're like, I have a lawyer. you don't know. I have a lawyer that's going to read the contract, and then all of a sudden, they're like, you know what? Maybe we'll get back to you. All you want to do is protect yourself. It's right. Just, it's a sad thing. It's, it's, it's tough, but, you know. It is a, it's a difficult thing to navigate. I, I, I always think about that Gary Larson cartoon that's a, just a tombstone, and it says, here lies an artist. They died of exposure. <laughs> because everybody's trying to get you to do stuff for exposure. I love that. Now, the I don't know. How do you feel about that? Because, like, I've been, I'm, I think maybe I'm just jaded. Maybe I've been like working behind the scenes and not as an artist for too long. But sometimes I feel like the working for it depends on what you mean by working for exposure. There's like taking existing designs you have and letting people use them for, you know, I feel like that's a little, that's not so much. That's not crazy to me. Like no, I understand I would totally why people do that. would want to do it. As long as we're compensated correctly. Well, that's the thing. Like also compensation correctly is like it's dependent on knowing your, your experience, right. knowing your worth. Right. That's so important because I feel like a lot of artists get this really bad attitude because of the uh nature of the way art sales and creative pay works, uh, and how varied it is and how all over the place it is and how small budgets can be for seemingly large business, business stuff. Right. So I feel like a lot of attitudes, artists get this bad attitude of like, you know, you need to pay me for, for anything if you want me to lift a finger. And that's great if you're in demand and your stuff is really cool. But like, you know, I feel like sometimes people will talk themselves out of a good opportunity. I think sometimes afraid. it's worth, depending on where you're at, to take what I would call, I guess, a hit. You yeah. know, to do something where you're 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 underpaid and not appreciated, just <laughs> to get a few of those under your belt, I would suggest you do that. It sucks, but do it when you're young. Right. Do it when you're young. Get it out of the way. Uh, but again, know your worth. Um, yeah. But I, I would say take a few hits just to get that experience. Because you got like but, tons of people doing like you know I know this is not the same to fine arts. So maybe I shouldn't even mention it, but like. You got a ton of people who like do editing videos for people trying to get in on their channel or something. Uh, but then you got to, you know, people are paying them as well for like YouTube editing. But I, I've always said this kind of analogy of like, be, if, 
being an artist was like being a lumberjack. Yeah. It would be like, welcome to the forest. You now need to clear this entire forest by yourself for free. And then when you're done, we'll give you like the best job in the world. Yeah. You know, I, I read something that the, the, uh, Three people that made Blair Witch, something that like the lab, the uh, <laughs> Lions, I forgot who it was. Uh, production house sent them like a fruit basket, <laughs> something really bad. And they got, yeah. you know, I think they, you know, there were a bunch of uh, Blair Witch movies after that, which all pretty much sucked oh, compared and, yeah. to the original. It was, but not they the had same nothing concept. to do with it. Um, and their name was, you know, used and taken away from them. And, you know, they got a bad example. deal with, the, with yeah. the distribution of Blair Witch. And that was a big hit. That's the thing, too, is like, you know, yeah, I guess you have to know your worth and you have to believe in what you're doing and be able to see the possibility of it becoming a runaway hit and just plan for a contingency of that. Like a lot of people you deal with will be happy to negotiate with you if you give them like both scenarios. You know, if you're like if you demand the kind of payment and, in, in you know, compensation before the fact of something like that's a big hit you know, they're not going to want to work with you because it might not be a big hit. But if you right. like, you could write that in too to your agreements or your emails even. Because nowadays, like, I remember you telling me one of your gallerists didn't want to have a contract and was mad at you for even asking because right. they said my emails are good enough. Yeah. And it wasn't even emails, shitty. it was like uh, Instagram DMs. DM. It is kind of shitty, but I think legally, like, this is not, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice, you know, but I think that that's sort of true. In that, if you just keep your receipts, like in one, you know, all of your receipts, keep everything. You know, the thing with artists, screen is cap that, all those because they can delete yeah, messages and yeah. they can delete emails. So just uh, screen cap everything and keep a record of what was agreed upon. I like having people sign what I call it, or what is called, I don't call it that, but uh, what's called an agreement of understanding. Agreement of understanding is not the same as like a binding legal contract that you can go sue somebody for, but it is like a piece of paper that says, we're doing this, we're all on the same page. And right. it's basically like an outline for any time that a dispute comes up, and it will, uh, that you can go back to that paper and say, well, this is what we outlined in the agreement of understanding. Right. So if we want to renegotiate this, I'm going to renegotiate my pay. I mean, the thing is, when you're young and you're an artist and something like that comes your way, you get really excited. Right. And then you forget about You just want to do it. You forget about like being compensated correctly, and you just go for it. Right. Um, it could turn out to be a good experience. It could turn out to be a bad experience. But as an artist, you got to just keep on doing it. Yeah. Um, but again, later on in life, you know, you don't have as much time anymore. So you really need to be protected later on in life in regards to uh, sharing your work with anybody. It's life. true. And if you do get kind of fleeced on a deal that it runs away and becomes a hit, you just like use that to market yourself aggressively after that. And yeah, yeah it's like it's like being a fine artist. It's kind of similar because when you uh, paint for 10, 20 years, then nobody cares. Then one day you get right. picked up and you get sold at auction and you, you sell for like a million dollars at auction. You don't get any of that fucking money. You don't get, you don't get the million dollar auction thing. The person who bought it did, the gallery does, but now your work is worth that. And now it's time to get paid properly once, you know, a value has been established. Right. Or if you wait too long, like in the case of, I had a, a very interesting roommate years ago um, and his father wrote the original Dazed and Confused, mm -hmm. which was stolen from him by Jimmy Page, brought to the Yardbirds, eventually, obviously, played by Led Zeppelin. But this guy, Jake Holmes, and the song is basically exactly the same. He actually even sounds like um, uh, Plant. Uh, it's a little bit more folky. It's just him and an acoustic guitar. Yeah. But it's the same freaking song. And I don't think he sued until, like, 2010. This song was created in 1967. Now, wow. I don't know if he was stoned or just didn't give a shit. I have no idea what the case was, but all he was able to do yeah. was from there on in, if the song was used, that he gets noted as the writer of the song. I don't Sometimes think he gets gotta do any that. money from that situation. And, and yep. I can't... You're talking about Dazed and Confused has made just that one song. Oh, that yeah, one yeah, song, yeah. Hunt, like hunt close to like over $100 million. It happens all the time to musicians and artists. It happened actually to my um, ex's father has a song on uh, the Easy Rider soundtrack. That's pretty bad. I Never saw a penny from it. That's fucked up. You know what I mean? It became this like massive, like huge hit, and the soundtrack was definitely sold. This is uh, interesting. But, you know, though. bad deal. The guy, Jake Holmes, who wrote Days and Confused, went yep. on to write some serious hits. Yeah. Like, Gillette, 
the best a man could get. Oh, nice. Yeah, and he, and he <laughs> also wrote, him, huh? be all that you can be. And yeah, he became like a, a jingle master. I think he Dang. wrote Sack Sack, Lego Maniac, Be a Pepper, Dr. Pepper. Ooh. Yeah, he's like the jingle god. That's amazing. So look him up, Jake oh. Holmes, super talented dude. And, yeah. and check out the original Dazed and Confused. That's true. Do you, I liked that movie. It was pretty good. I actually like that movie too. Everyone's yeah. like Ben Affleck scumbag. Yeah. Which right now, <laughs> sorry all you lovers of Ben Affleck and J Lo out there, but it looks like the end is nigh. Nice. They are coming to a conclusion. I think A Rod is going back for that. I think. Oh boy, looking to hit a home run. <laughs> I was I couldn't find it. I was quick trying to quickly look it up because I remember hearing a story about some woman in like the 40s or 50s maybe. I think it could be in 60s. It's hard to tell. But she basically became like a jingle uh she wrote like a ton of these jingles from she supported herself and like five kids or something by writing into contests. Oh, in that's a jingle awesome. in a jingle contest and winning them all the time. So like a ton of American jingles were made by this one lady who was just like at home, it sitting must away have been from a while sweepstakes. Ago, because there's probably no one needs that. Any, I can't imagine. Oh that. yeah, right. I feel like AI is the end of all creative contests. Like there will never be another contest for We're creative not even contact allowed to, again. We, we can't mention never AI. again. We can't. Right? What's the deal? We what can't even talk about AI on YouTube, right? No, no, no. YouTube What's just has specific? a thing. YouTube has a. It's so prevalent now that YouTube's added a feature. If you make videos, you know this. It's a little checkbox that basically says. Does my video contain AI that makes someone appear to say something they've not? So basically, if you take a celebrity and like, remember when everyone thought that Gary Busey clip lie. was real? I thought it was real. Right. Everyone thought that Gary Busey clip when he's talking about, um, what was he talking about Seafood, in that one? I think. Okay, it was like, <laughs> no, it was, I can't remember it. It was so funny though. Think about shrimp. I no, it wasn't about shrimp or seafish. No, it was. Uh, I, we're we're spacing out. But anyway, that's not important. The important <laughs> thing was that uh, that was not Gary Busey. Everyone thought it was. And now, if you were to put that clip on YouTube, you would have to disclose that yes, I used AI to make it look like Gary Busey said some weird shit, which is a weird use of AI anyway, because Gary Busey's always saying weird shit. He doesn't this need AI. This is true. This is true. You, you remember that show I, with Busey? Like there was a show that followed him around, and like it was, they were going into like a Best Buy. And well, he always seemed crazy, but from what I understand, yeah. he was in a, a motorcycle accident. Yeah, and That's he right. was never quite the same. Yeah, after I the Buddy Holly, crazy, which was a great role. Great, he was awesome in that movie. He really was. He it, was. Yeah, phenomenal. Buddy Holly looked just like him, but yeah, it's true. I mean, <laughs> if you go back to Under Siege when he's like, you know, right, fighting Steven Seagal. <laughs> Oh, and and um, Lethal Weapon. That's right. Let us not forget. I mean, that's probably one of his biggest roles. Yeah. Right? And I'm a big fan of Jake Busey. Big fan. The only thing I know Jake Busey from was Contact. He's from Weird. He was in Contact. He yeah, he played Foster. the. Um, he played like Cody the. Um, yes. He played oh, the. Yes. Uh, well done. Jake Busey, Gary Busey's son, played a cult leader, who was like you that's know, an older movie, super Contact. exciting, cited for the aliens. Or whatever. To come I gotta out. go back and see that movie. It was okay. I think Contact got a lot of guff when it came out. People didn't like it, but I thought it was pretty good. It's because you don't see aliens at all. It's right. a whole thing about aliens, and at the end, it's like her dad. Like it's presenting to her as her dad. So people were like, "Lame! I came here for alien designs. I'm left with a dad." Nowadays, I'll just be like, oh. "Okay, Chat GPT, give me an alien." <laughs> oh man, it's sad. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, like I said, I'm I'm hooked on, on I'm a musician and I cannot stop using Suno. I know, right? I can't. I can't stop. It's <laughs> sick. But we're gonna have to share some of those songs in the secret places within Throw our it up Patreon. on our Patreon. We're gonna we be, have? Hey, check it we out. We have updated our Patreon. We so have. if you really care about us and you love us, <laughs> take care of us and we'll take care of you. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right That's here right. on Lucky Time Explosion. Wow, 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 wow. We have like a minute left. I think it's just enough time to rattle off some of the days of the, yeah. uh, the days that Holy it shit. is. So it's holidays today. Finger cat to work day, which is like. Okay. Everyone loves cats. That's cool. How about what's, what's internet? Oh, a... eat your veggies day. That's good. Eat your vegetables. It's what's garbage. your favorite vegetable? Um, What is my favorite vegetable? Peanuts. No. <laughs> um, favorite vegetable? No. Mine's jicama. I guess broccoli. I like jicama. Jicama? Tastes like nothing. Oh, then why do they use it? 
It's crunchy for salads. Does it give you like lots of protein and vitamins? It's like a it's like an apple or a pear that tastes like a potato, like a raw potato. Oh, delicious. Okay. Let's, I like Garbage let's... Man Day too. It is also Garbage Man Day, so Garbage if you're out there day? If you're out there and you see some New York City sanitation workers, please wish them a happy Garbage Man Day. We're going to get out of here. We will see you uh this Wednesday with hopefully a special guest, a comedian. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Bye. Electric lemon.